What is up YouTube? How you guys doing? I am here showing you guys how to set up the Chromecast with Google TV built in. Let me start off just by saying that this device is about 50 bucks. I don't have an affiliate link for this device because Amazon doesn't sell it on Amazon and that's where I have my affiliate links. I'll get some more eventually, but I'm just putting out a link to this device in the description straight from Google. I get nothing for it. So I wouldn't be here telling you that I like this device if I didn't like it because I get absolutely nothing if you buy it. Um, so I just want to start that off by saying that you can, you know, know that I get zero for what I'm about to say, but I want you guys to check out this device, see what it can do and, uh, let's get it set up. All right. Let me switch over to this right here. All right. It's going to ask me to pair the remote, which I have to press the back and home button. Like it tells you right there until the light starts pulsing. So I'm going to do that right now on here. And now it's flashing on my remote and it's paired. Pretty simple stuff. I'm going to choose English United States. It's going to tell me to please wait. Um, the reason I like this device, guys, is it runs Google's TV OS, which to me is way better than anything else out there. Um, Amazon would be the next thing that I like best, but as far as just the OS goes, but um, the fact that it's owned by Google, created by Google, um, and it runs basically this, a very similar OS to the Shield makes me a happy camper. On this screen right here, guys, if you don't have Google Home, okay, I'm blocking it, but you see where my picture is? You can go down to the bottom there and try to set it up with your remote control if you don't have the Google Home app. But if you have an Android or an iPhone, install the Google Home app on your device, right? Um, and you'll be able to set it up. It already popped up on my screen telling me, set up a nearby Chromecast device. But if it didn't, you can press the home button and do it. So I just, I just opened it up. I'm gonna tell it to set it up. It's looking for the device now. I, it's easier to do it this way. It'll automatically connect to your Wi-Fi. But if you have a problem or if you don't have the app, just go right behind where my face is right now. And as a matter of fact, I'll show it to you what it says here. There you go. Let's just zoom it over. You see on the bottom here, set up on TV instead. May take longer. Requires typing with the remote. All right. So basically you'd set it up old school style. Um, so it's asking me on my device now what I like to set up Chromecast three, uh, the Chromecast, I'm going to say yes. And it's asking me to scan the QR code, which is on the screen. I just scanned it. It's connecting to the Chromecast. Now, if I have an issue, like I said, I'll just go down below and set it up with the remote, but you can do it this way. It's better. So if you got an Android or iOS device, install the Google home app and follow the prompts in the Google home app to add this. If you don't get a pop-up like I did, all right. Um, you can go ahead and open the Google Home app, press the plus sign on the top and say, add new device, and you'll get started. That way it'll find the Chromecast. So it says connected on the screen here, but my phone is still saying um, that it's connecting to Chromecast. There we go. So now it's connected and it's asking me to accept the policies. I'm gonna say, I agree. And it's asking me, where is it? So I'm just gonna put it in my studio. I'm gonna say next. And it's asking me to connect to my Wi-Fi now. I'm gonna pick my Wi-Fi network and say next. And now it's connecting to Wi-Fi and you don't have to type anything. So this is a very simple way to do it. That's why I say doing the Google Home app, if, especially if you have the Home app already, best way to go. If not, you can go old school and use the remote. And you even see here on the screen, it says having trouble, press and hold back on the remote. That'll get you back into doing it with just the remote. So it can be done with just the remote guys. Not a big deal at all. All right, so now it's connected. It's asking me to follow the instructions in the Google Home app. If there's updates for the device, it will try to update them now as well. It'll try to update the device now that it's connected to Wi-Fi. Um, so I'm signing in. And I need to verify it's me. So I'm gonna say next. It's asking me to use my, my thumb for my fingerprint. I've done that. Signing in, and it says I'm signed in. Give it a second. Setting up your TV. And it's asking me if I want to allow it location to help improve Chromecast, uh, telling me about personalized recommendations and my services and my privacy. I'm going to accept those. And now it's asking me about the Google Assistant, and it's showing me the Google Assistant button 
which is right there, the only dark button on the main screen, all right, on the, on the remote. Um, I'm gonna say continue. Now it's asking if I wanna search across all your TV apps. This is a very cool feature that is exclusive to this device at this time. I'm gonna say allow. It is still going now. Somebody in my household already unlinked to this device. <laughs> Uh, do I want to activate voice match? Yeah, I'll do that. It already knows my voice because I have it set up on my phone. So it says my assistant can already recognize my voice. Voice match has been set up. Do I want to turn on personal results? I'm going to say no thanks. I don't need that on my TV devices. I prefer not to have it. All right. So on my phone now, I just want to show you guys this real quick. I'm going to kick back over here. It's asking me to choose the subscriptions that I currently have. So out of these apps here, you're going to want to choose whatever you have already. If you So like I have Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, Spotify, Stars, HBO Max, Prime Video. I also have ESPN. Um, I have a Showtime Anytime account, but not Showtime. And it's only showing me Showtime here. So I don't know if I'm going to put Showtime just for the heck of it, because maybe it has that. Um, and I don't have the rest of these, like Epics I can get from my cable provider, but I don't have Epics now, which is paying for Epics by itself. So yeah, I'm going to leave that alone. Actually, I'll turn off Showtime. I can add it later if I have to. I'm going to say next. And it's asking me, control your Chromecast devices. Use your voice to control your Chromecast. Um, those are the Chromecasts I have upstairs. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to say next. And I'm going to name this device. Um, it's asking me to rename it. Um... It's, uh, I think it's getting confused with my other, um, it's getting confused with my other Chromecasts right now in here. I'm not sure what I just did. I think I might've in the app tried to tell it that I want to control my other Chromecast with my voice and it's asking me to rename it. So let's zoom back over here. All right. Um, while it's doing this. But I may have caused this to wreak a little havoc on my home app because I did not turn off controlling voice on my upstairs Chromecast. I'm going to go ahead and press back on the remote for the sake of this video, just to, I'm going to say finish setup with the remote. Um, I'm going to not do this now. This is basically, um, to set up the volume buttons on the side here. Okay. Let me, let me zoom this out. You can make this control your, uh, you got these volume buttons right here. You can make this control your, um, TV or your sound bar or whatever. I have this connected to my PC, so I'm going to say not now, but if you were to set that up, it would just give you the volume control of whatever device you're playing the Chromecast on. So I would advise you guys to do that. Um, and you just have to put in the make and model and it'll try. Um, so it's going to install the apps. This takes a little while, guys. So I'll come back over here while it's doing that. Like I said, it is a little slower to get started installing the apps and getting everything set up. But to me, this device is the best if you need a low cost option. Your, your extra 200 megahertz of speed, your extra RAM, uh, Google OS makes it just makes it better. You know, that's, that's how I feel about it. And so I'm just bringing it to you guys to show you. It does take a little while to install your apps and get going initially. So you'll see that now. Let me, um, let me show you guys the remote overall while we're here waiting. All right. You have your select button 
and your left, right, up and down right here. This is your Google Assistant button. This is your back button, your home button. This is your mute button. You have a Netflix and a YouTube button here. Then you have power and you have source. So if you're controlling a TV, it's gonna let you change that around. And your little microphone is right here. And like I said, on the sides, you have your volume up and down button. They're kind of like a rocker, kind of the way phones are. And on the back, you can pull this down in the halfway point. There's a little circle right here. That's going to let you uh, get into the battery compartment. Now in the Chromecast itself, guys, which I have plugged in, so I can't really show you right now, but this is the actual Chromecast. Uh, on the back of the Chromecast device, the front has the G, all right? On the back, there's a little button and you can hold that button in if you want a factory reset. It's the only way to factory reset the Chromecast. On the back, you hold the button in and after maybe about five to 10 seconds of holding in the button, it will uh, give you guys, it'll start flashing yellow. Once, once it flashes yellow a bunch of times and turns white again, you can let go of the button and that will completely wipe the Chromecast out and factory reset it. So that's uh, the only button that's on the Chromecast device itself. Um, and that's pretty much it. As far as the remote goes, guys, it's nothing super special. You know, it's just a, but it feels good. It's a nice uh, soft touch remote. It doesn't, you know, it feels very soft when you rub your fingers on it, which I appreciate. And the buttons are clicky. It works, gets the job done. Um, I don't think there's anything particularly worse about this remote as far as um, how it is than any other remote. It works well. And the buttons are big, which I do kind of like. You see here, they're, they're pretty large in general. So I do like that. Um, I do find it kind of odd that the microphone button is a different color and it's raised. So you'll feel that it sticks up further, which is kind of interesting. But all right, we finally got all the apps in. Just adding finishing touches. Your Chromecast with Google TV is ready. So I'm going to hit start exploring. This is your home screen now, guys. So if you notice, it looks pretty similar in general to the Shield or, or a Sony TV or something. It's slightly different because this is Google TV and not Android TV. It's basically Google's little change on Android TV. If you go up to the top, you get a search function, you get a for you, you get movies, shows, apps, so you can see all your apps. All right. Um, and you get a library. So anything you purchase, movies and shows will end up here. The other cool thing is this watch list down here. I can't show you the watch list too much because it's kind of funky. But if I go to like, um, I'll show you a couple of things in the settings to get, we'll get back to the watch list actually once I set it up in the settings. So over on the right, I have settings and this is your sleep screen. So I'm going to go into settings and show you guys this right off the bat. Once you get in here, it's kind of similar to any other Android TV settings. It's just a slightly different layout, but what you can actually do is very similar. I'm going to go into um, system. I'm going to go over to about. All right. If you have system updates, you can pull them here. There's my device name. So it says studio TV. That's fine. I can deal with that. You can factory reset it there. I didn't even see that before. So there you go. Factory reset is there. Um, so you could do that there too, or you can just press it on the back of the device if your device is frozen or something. You get your status, all right? You see the Android TV OS version is 10, the security patch. And if you go down to the build, once again, like always, you can keep pressing the select button in the middle here, and you are now a developer once you hit it enough times. Press back. Let's go down, and we should find developer options. There it is. Move over to developer options. And let's find your animation scales right here. Window animation scale, let's make that 0.5 times. Transition animation scale, let's make that 0.5 times. And animator duration scale, let's make that 0.5 times. If you've watched my shield videos, you guys know this just makes the menu layout uh, transition of screens between the menus faster. I like it. It just makes the device feel more snappy. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but this is my preferred way to do it. So I'm going to hit back now. Um, under system, you also have a restart option here at the bottom. So that's good. We're going to go back up and we're going to back out of here now. And we're going to go through everything. All right. So you have your network. If you want to change your Wi-Fi, you would do that there. Your accounts, I already signed in. You have your privacy settings. So you can go over here and say usage and diagnostics. You can turn off sending them stuff. Whatever you prefer doing, you don't want them to have your location. You can turn that off if you want to. 
um, ads, manage your ad settings, such as resetting your advertising ID. Uh, that'll just take you into Google. I would leave that alone. You're still going to get ads even if you do that. You're just not going to get personalized ads, so it doesn't make much sense. Google Assistant. I will not block offensive words because I like offensive words. I'm going to turn off the safe search feature. If you don't want personal results, guys, here's searchable apps too. So as you sign into more apps, you'll be able to turn those apps on on your Assistant to search for them if they're uh, compatible. Your purchase authentication you have app permissions, so you can see all of them, special app access, security and restrictions. This is where you would get to unknown sources. So if you install apps, if you want to install apps from other apps, you're going to need to go into there. All right, let's back out of that. Display and sound. This is kind of interesting. So HDMI CEC, if you want to use this remote to control your TV or let, like when you power off your Chromecast, it turns off your TV, you're going to want to have that enabled. Um... If you want to match content, I like this setting, guys. I turn this on. Match content dynamic range. Basically, if you get something that's in HDR, it should switch to HDR. If you get something that's not in HDR, it'll take you out of HDR. Let's check out advanced display settings. Allow game mode. Yeah, that's up to you. Um, I don't believe that you can use Google Stadia with this yet, but that is coming in an update, so I'd probably just leave this on. My current resolution is 4K60. That's as much as this goes, so we're good there. System sounds, you can turn on or off. Surround sound, turn on or off. And advanced sound settings. So advanced sound formats selection. I would just leave that on automatic, guys. It works fine. I'm going to back out of display and sound. Now in apps, let's go to see all apps. Okay. Now here's Disney Plus. I'm going to show you guys this. I don't personally have a Disney Plus. This device does not have a lot of storage. So I'm going to uninstall Disney Plus. Okay. I would strongly recommend you uninstall any apps you don't have. I have these. I don't have Sling TV. I'm going to uninstall it right away. I'm going to save my space. I do have a Spotify account. I guess I'll leave it for now, but I would never really use Spotify on the TV. Um, YouTube Music, YouTube TV, I don't have. I'm going to uninstall that right away. All right. So there you go. You can show the system apps if you want, but I don't advise anyone to uninstall system apps really. Those apps are important for it to run and work properly. All right. So I would leave all those alone. But like Google Play Movies and TV, you could potentially disable it. I, on this particular device, I just leave it alone. And I'll show you why later. Um, other than that, you can, like I said, you got security restrictions, but you saw already. Now your system, accessibility. This is if you have anybody with hearing impairments or color blindness, you can change these kind of settings in here to help them out. Your about, which we already checked out. Your date and time, I get that automatically because once you connect to Wi-Fi, it works. If you want to change your language, your keyboard, here's your storage, like I said, internal shared storage. So my apps is less than a gig. I have cache data, miscellaneous, and what's available. So we're down to 2.6 gigs just with a few apps installed. It doesn't have a lot of space. It's a 4.4 gig total. All right, you can always come to cache data, press your button, clear cache data. And when you back out and you come back in, you will see that your cache data will be lower. Right now, it's not because I didn't do anything yet. But if you get more than this amount of cache data, it will clear that out. Um, your ambient mode, you can choose this like if you're on the, this is if you're on the sleep screen. So you can do an art gallery, experimental. Um, you can do weather for your area. So let's do like Fahrenheit. For me, you can choose Celsius if you want. You can show the time with ambient if you choose. All right, so that's on show. Device information, uh, Wi-Fi network, stuff like that if you want. I'll show that too, whatever, it's fine. Uh, personal photo data if you wanted to. Uh, portrait Google Photos, you can show pairs, whatever you want to do. There's a lot of stuff you can do in here. You get your slideshow speed. So this is all on your sleep screen, guys. I'm going to back out of that. Here's energy saver. So this is how long to turn the display off, right? So you can choose whatever you want here. Developer options, we went in. I wouldn't do anything else in here personally, guys. Um, don't mess with this aside from what I showed you before on your animator scales. The rest of it, I'd pretty much leave alone. If you're having trouble for some reason um, with too many apps being open, you can tell it to destroy background activities as soon as you leave them, or you can change the background process limit. So what this would do is the only other thing I might touch, and this is only if you're having slowness issues, guys. 
you could say at most have four allow four processes to run in the back or three. I haven't had an issue with the device. I leave it on standard. It's fine. But if you are having an issue, you can check that one out too. Um, you also have the force allow apps on external, but I don't have any external plugged in here. So no need for it whatsoever. Um, other than that, you have let others control cast to your media. I would say never if you don't want anybody else from their phone to be able to send casting to this device. Just turn that to never. And that's it in, in system, really. Um, remotes and accessories. So here you can pair a remote or accessory. Right now I have the Chromecast remote. Set up remote buttons. So now you can add your device to your TV, receiver, or soundbar, whatever you want it to control with volume. So I can say control the Chromecast volume, right? Um, what the power button does and the input button. So that allows you, if you've set it up to control your TV, to change the input. Power button, you can tell it what to do. Turn off the Chromecast. All right, I'm going to do Chromecast power for me because I'm only using it connected to my PC. Um, and then your input button, it's just on auto CEC, so... And leave that besides this guys uh if you want to under remotes and accessories you can pair a bluetooth remote or something like that whatever you want to do here um and that's it you got help and feedback that's literally all you got it's pretty simple nothing too crazy let's go back to this home screen now and i'll show you something so down here you have your apps so this is what's here all right um, I'm going to open Netflix real quick just to show you guys. All right. It knows I'm signed in as me. It found me. I just want to show you that these apps you see, you can get. All these things will show up in HDR. All right. So you're good there. It runs fine. It's not a problem. I unfortunately, I'll go to YouTube and play one of my 4K videos to show you 4K playback. I'm going to exit Netflix. I just wanted to show you that real quick. Um, let me sign into Hulu also real fast. It should hopefully just remember me. Uh, nope, I got to log in. Uh, I'll activate on a computer. So let me do that with my phone. Okay. We'll go to Hulu.com forward slash activate. And enter my device code. We'll activate that right there. So it should say I'm good to go now. There we go. I'll sign in as me. All right. Um, I'm going to go back to the home screen and I'll get my prime video in. I just want to, I want to do these because I want to show you guys a little bit of how the search stuff works. All right. So I'm going to sign in and I'm going to go to amazon.com slash my TV. All this stuff requires your phone or a computer. Um, registration code. Register the device, success, and there we go. So I'm in there. And the last thing that I'm going to do, just to show you guys one more thing, is I'm going to go back to the home screen, and I'm going to go to, I'll do HBO Max. Gonna sign in. All right, so I gotta go again to here. This works 
you can sign into this if you have um, HBO with your cable subscription or if you pay for HBO Max. Either way. So I'm using my cable subscription for this. And sign in through TV or mobile provider. I'm going to choose on the phone. And I have to go down to my provider. And sign in with my credentials to my cable account. And it should now tell me that I'm good to go. All done. It's taking a second to figure it out over here. There we go. So who's watching? Um, me. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to the home screen. And let's go ahead and open up YouTube. It's going to sign in as me. And I am going to go ahead and go to the search function so that I don't get in trouble. There's Lee Talks Tech. There's my channel. Here's my unboxing, which was in 4K, which I just did. So let's go ahead and watch that. And we'll see how that works. And that's working fine. So I just did this a little while ago, the unboxing of the device. So there you go. All right. Uh, let's go back to the home screen. Now, uh, there's one other thing I wanted to show you over here. If I go over to my settings, all right. Um, and it counts. You do get one more thing. Go to your, your email account and move over. You can lock the settings on this device. Manage your services. So if you happen to get another account, okay, you can then add it. But these are the only ones it works with, right? Um, I wish I could get Showtime to show up here, but I don't think this works... Um, unless you have your Showtime Anytime app. I'm gonna turn it on just to see your content preferences. You can rate movies and shows so we can give the best content suggestion for you. Uh, let's click on that. And you can start doing this as well, which is kind of cool. So you can, you can thumbs up or thumbs down things by pressing right or left or skip them by going up. So I'm gonna skip Pennyworth, I haven't seen that. The rap game, I like that. Star Wars, I'm not a Star Wars fan. I'm going to say less like this. John Wick, yes, cool. For Life, I like that show a lot. The Sun is also a star, I don't know. Van Helsing, Van Helsing's okay, I'll, I'll like that. The Doorman, I don't know that one. Heroes, I have not seen Heroes. So, I know that's probably kind of a sin. Bruno, I think is hilarious. I'll watch Bruno. Uh, that sounds good, even though I don't know that. Before I Fall, I don't know anything about. Despicable Me Too. I'm not a kid. I don't care about those movies. I'm going to say I less like this. Kong Skull Island, I haven't seen. So I can keep rating or done. I'll do one more time. Criminal Minds, I love that show. Eight Mile, love that movie. Yes, Power Book 2, Ghost, I love. Birds of Prey, definitely cool. War of the Worlds, don't know about it. Sniper Special Ops, yeah, I could check something like that out. Horrible Bosses, definitely funny. Um, Alien vs. Predator, I love that movie. Hanging with the Homeboys, definitely a favorite of mine. Spider-Man, Homecoming, um, yeah, I like that. Ethan Hawke, 24 Hours to Live, don't care for. Mechanic Resurrection, don't know about. The Outpost, don't know about. Ghosted Love Gone Missing, Guilty Pleasure, guys, I like that show. Um, City on a Hill, uh, that I've seen that a long time ago. Um, I'll skip it, I don't remember. So nice job, basically. I can keep rating more if I want. Um, I'll do one more just to try to get some ratings in here. Black Panther, absolutely love that movie. The Predator, I like. The Little Things, um, I was not a big fan of The Little Things, but I love Denzel, so I'm afraid if I put less like this, it might not give me Denzel movies. I'm going to skip that one. Party of Five, I'm going to say no, not for me. Godzilla, mm, I'll skip that. 
In Time. Great movie, guys. Highly underrated. Just because Justin Timberlake's in it don't mean nothing. If you haven't seen In Time, watch it. Fantastic film. Uh, yes, yeah, Sons of Anarchy. Awesome show. Power. Yes. Love that show. Life Stinks. Don't know anything about that. The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Um, mm, let's skip it. I don't really... I don't want to get too many Spider-Man things in here. Crank is awesome. Yes. The Hitman's Bodyguards. Yes. Uh, Into the Woods. Skip. Predator vs. Requiem. Skip. All Eyes on Me? Sure. All right, so I'm going to say done. I'm, I was giving it content preferences. So this is an important thing here to start with, all right? You can autoplay trailers, uh, payments and purchases, your Google Assistant, apps-only mode. Now, if you read what this says, when on, this will hide Google's recommendations from your home screen, along with your ability to give feedback on movies or shows. So this is basically disabling Google's uh, stuff. So let's turn that on real quick, all right? I just want to show you guys what happens when you do this. I'm going to go back to the home screen. And now it's very different. All I have is apps. Okay. It says apps only mode is enabled. So I'm just getting apps. If you just want apps, that's what you do. And you'll just see your apps here. I'm going to go back up, go over to my name, click on it. Um, or you can press to the right, actually. Hang on. Oops, why'd I do that? Hang on. Um, there we go. Get into it. And I'm going to turn off apps-only mode because one of the things that makes this device so cool is the fact that you do get all these recommendations. So now I'm going to go back to the home screen and I have top picks for you. So you see these things here, right? And it's recommending them based on, you see stars, Hulu at the top left there underneath the title. Prime Video. So whatever you sign into that it works with, you're going to get these things here. All right. So see, it's showing me Ray Donovan on Showtime, but I don't know if I can actually do that. So what do I do about getting more apps? All right. Let's go ahead and go up and go to apps right here. And in here, you can search for apps. It doesn't have a traditional app store icon. So I'm gonna hit search for apps. And I'm going to go ahead and search for Showtime. Let's just try that. It'll probably give me Showtime anytime, I would hope. No, there we go. Showtime anytime. That's the one I can use with my cable subscription. So the regular Showtime app is... You have to pay for that, so... So I'm going to open Showtime anytime. And inside of here, I'll go down. I just want to sign into everything so you can see. You go to settings and activate Showtime anytime. And again, back on my phone, we go to Showtime anytime.com slash activate. Asking me for my code. And I'm going to choose my provider. And it's verifying my account. And it's asking me which device I have. I'm going to have to choose Android TV because it doesn't show me a Google TV or a Chromecast. So I'm going to say OK. It says I've activated it. So let's see if that works. This really is an Android TV device, guys. There we go. Activation successful. Start using Showtime anytime. All right. And now I can watch anything I want inside of this app. So let's go back. I just wanted to see how this would work because if I go back to my account now, right? And I move over here, your services, 
I believe sh I, Showtime Anytime doesn't show up still. So I have Showtime only here. Um, let's go back to the home screen then. All right. And let's find something that's on Showtime. I'm just curious about this. I had something that was on Showtime before. There we go. So let me click that and see Showtime Watch Now, Seasons. You can add this to your watch list. I just want to show you this, okay? So I'm going to add that to my watch list. Um, if I click on Showtime, it's going to try to open the Showtime app, which I can't do because I'll show you. You got to pay for Showtime. But I wish it would let me go to Showtime Anytime. Google, if you watch this, let that cross over in the future if someone has Showtime Anytime. So I'm going to continue. And I'm pretty sure it's going to block me here. See? You have to pay. Already subscribed, sign in. It's going to make you do that. It doesn't let you... Uh, see, it says you Showtime Anytime. So I can't do it. So it's kind of bad for that. But... If I pick something else, like Beyond Skyline is on Netflix, right? If I click that and I say, watch on Netflix now, or let's add this to my watch list, and I go to Netflix and watch now, it will switch to Netflix and open it and just start playing it because I already logged in with my Netflix. So it's very convenient. It's nice. It gives you, the more things you rate, the, you know, the more it ends up showing you. It takes you right to it. All right. I'm going to back out from that because I don't want to get in trouble. So I'll exit that. Um, but that is what you get up here. And it's very cool. It does, the more things you rate, the better it will give you. Now, remember we talked about the watch list before. All right. So look, if you like power, now it's giving me Snowfall, Ghost, Ray Donovan, For Life. These are very, very, you know, well curated things. Guys, if you've never watched The Wire, watch it. <laughs> Best show ever. Uh, you know, I like pretty much all these shows, Boardwalk Empire. I would be very happy with these suggestions right here. You get sci-fi movies, Marvel movies, recommended videos. Look, it's recommending my video that I just did. Um, trending. You get a lot of stuff here. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. So at the bottom, you can manage your services again. So let's manage services. And you can see what's here. Now, up at the top, you have movies, shows. You can go right through just those things if you want. Your apps, your library. Now, your library is where your watch list shows up. So it's almost like having your own little track TV right here. It's very cool stuff, guys. I really like this. So if I click on Ray Donovan, I can take it off the watch list. If I click on Beyond Skyline, I can take it off the watch list. You can watch trailers, all that stuff. Look, three ways to watch. Let's see what it says. Netflix, Google TV, and Google TV. So it's giving you ways to get the stuff. Really, really cool, cool device, guys. I find this pretty awesome. My watch list is empty again. But that's where you find it in your library. Um, you're, at any point, I can search for something. I can say, uh, let's see. The little things. Oh, I have to hold the button down. Hang on. The little things. It doesn't understand me. Okay. That's fine. Let's try something else. Snowfall. Boom. I don't know why I didn't understand the little things, but... You see Crank is right there, so let's just... All I got to do is hold this down from anywhere. I don't got to be there. Crank. Boom. All right. So you can search for literally anything, and it curates ways for you to watch this. Rent it, buy it. All right. Very cool stuff. You can rate it. All right. That's already rated for me, though. Watch list. Watched it. Tells you about the cast and crew. Okay, so I could say, well, look, um, 
who do I want to know about in here? Let's look up. Uh... I don't know. So here's, if you like Crank, you can get other movies, movies about contract killings, thrillers. It's pretty cool that it, you know, gives you this stuff. All right. So let's try, let's try searching for by uh, Bai Ling. If I click on Bai Ling, it takes me to American Chinese actress when she was born, shows you other films that she was in. People also search for more people. Okay. So you can go down the list of curated specifically for you shows, and it's awesome. All right. Um, that's pretty much it, guys. I'm back on the home screen. And again, real quick, just so you remember, if you want to get apps, you got to go over to apps. And you can go down here and do search for apps. Other things I'm going to do, watch this, okay? Let's try doing a voice search for apps while I'm in here. See, it says, it shows you the, the um, mic icon up there, the Google Assistant icon. Send files to TV. Sorry, I didn't understand. Okay. Analytics speed test. Yep. So that, that was not very successful there. I'm going to go back to search for apps and I'm going to type in Analyti. And hit search. I'm, it's apparently not giving me apps. That's weird. Catch live sports. I have ESPN already. Um, you guys can put something like Pluto TV, which is free as well. You can install that. All right. That's all free. I'd strongly recommend that you install that on here. Um, app categories. Let's see. Video players and editors. We get VLC. All right. We'll get that. You guys know what to do with this one. Okay. <laughs> get that. If you guys like those things, go ahead. Um, as you can see, it has a lot of stuff. I didn't see Plex or did I just miss Plex? Let's search for Plex. I want to try, I'm having trouble with this search for apps. Let's try Plex. Search. There's Plex. So I can tell it to install. And then let me search for, for me, I got HD home run, right? Search. Guess that app is not on here. It's kind of weird. Like I said, I messed with one of these and I know how to do the setup for the settings, but I don't, I haven't really used one thoroughly, thoroughly, like for a long period of time. It's kind of interesting here though. Um, so I already installed Pluto. Yep, it's just opening. I'll back out of that. So under apps, can I search like, because if I go here, 
I get search for apps. But let's go to tools. So you got downloader. There's send files to TV. So weird, right? So send files to TV, install. So you just go to tools and get it, guys. Do the updates. This has changed a bit since I looked at it. Um, there's explore, which is what I also want. And analytics right there too. So get it from tools. I'm going to install these apps. And Analyti. I'm going to take a look and see what kind of speed I actually get on Analyti real quick. All right, so let's open that up. And over the Wi-Fi, it's doing plenty fine. For a little tiny device like this, it's good. That's more than enough. I can stream 8K. It tells you everything. All right. More than enough. All right. So with that said, guys, I'm going to go back to the home screen and I'm going to switch over here. This is as much as I can show you on YouTube for a setup. That's your standard setup. Hope that helped you guys. I will do a live stream from Twitch on setting up other things on this device. And you guys can feel free. I will link the lo below to my Twitch channel. Follow me on Twitch if you want to see, you know, more third-party stuff being set up. I'll show you guys how to do that on my Twitch channel. Hope you guys enjoyed this setup video. And I hope you guys, it helps you guys out. Link to this product is below. I get absolutely nothing if you buy it. Doesn't help me in any way, shape, or form. I just like the device. So I shared it with you guys. Love you guys. Stay supreme. Lee Talks Tech, out of here. Have a good one, folks.